And Justin here today we are checking out Suck My Kiss by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Really great fun song to play this one. Really, really super cool. There's kind of three main bits to it. The little kind of intro riff, the main riff for the verses, and the chorus part. So uh, we're going to go through them one at a time and I'll try and explain the variations, but it is really important, of course, that you're listening to the original recording, especially some of the variations I explained to you. You really need to listen and kind of make sure you know where they are in the, in the track. So, uh, let's go straight to a close-up, because uh, I think most of this lesson is going to be better explained that way. Okay, so we're starting off here with the first finger in the first fret of the thickest string. Then it's third finger in the third fret of the thickest string. Now the next note is the first finger, first fret of the fifth string, but we also play the following two open strings. That'll be open fourth string and open third string. I know it sounds a little bit funny out of context, but you can hear it in there definitely. <laughs> And then those first two notes again, so... So you're going to have to kind of arch your first finger around a little bit. When you're playing these other notes on the thicker string, you kind of want to keep the ed inside edge of that first finger touching all of the strings to kind of keep them muted, especially if you've got a lot of gain on, uh, you might find it gets a little bit too crunchy, uh, extra notes ringing out and stuff like that if you try and keep the fingers arched all the time. So nice and flat on here, then lift it up to get those open strings as well, and then back again. Now, I'm going to discuss with you quickly the picking hand here. So the picking will be down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. Now the reason for that is that you want to keep the hand moving all of the time uh, and all of the notes uh, except for one are either on the beat or the and. So one and two and three e and four and one and two and three e and four. So that way, that's the reason that you would have down, 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 up, down. It is alternate picking, even though you're doing a whole bunch of down strums in a row, because the hand keeps moving all the same. You don't have to be doing a big mo motion for here. I found to get a sound better, I'm playing really hard and just think of playing the string that's involved. But you could like... There is a little bit of that clicky clacky stuff going on as well if you want, because it does add to the vibe of it a little bit. So that's the first kind of riff that you've got to get your head around. So it does that riff down there three times, and then it moves on to the next little part, which is further up the neck, uh, which we have this. So first of all, fifth uh, string, third fret, hammer on the fifth fret, and then play it twice more with a down and an up. So it'll be down, hammer, down, up. Then we've got on the third fret of the fourth string, down, down, up. Down, hammer, down, down, up. Down, down, up. Then we're going to use our third finger to slide from the fifth fret to the seventh fret. Down pick, slide, down, up. That part, 5th fret to 7th fret, still on the 4th string. Down pick, slide, down, up. And then we've got 7th fret to ninth fret. Down pick, slide, down, up. There's a cute, few kind of fingering choices that you got here. This first part pretty standard. Now, 
I enjoy using my third finger, but I don't like using my third finger for the same fret moving over a string, so I've been tending to use my second finger and making that last slide with the second finger. But if you want, you could second finger for that first one on the fourth string, then third finger. Slightly more comfortable, it just doesn't fit under my fingers that well. Doesn't really matter which one you want to use, you know. So that's that kind of second part of riff one. So you got. Etc. Just does that twice at the beginning there. Now often I'm using my fourth finger on the third fret there of the thing. It just my little finger just sits nicely to play that note and kind of gets all of those strings muted. So quite often if I've get, got that sort of thing two frets apart, I use my first and my fourth finger. You can use your first or your third or your fourth or the fourth. It doesn't make any difference. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, we've got one, three, three, one, three, three, one, three, three, one, three, three, one, three, one, three, one, hammer on very quick, and then first fret uh, of the thicker string again. It's a little tricky then get that first figure to kind of roll over onto the thicker string, but it just takes a little bit of practice. Now the big deal here really is the picking. So you should be going down, down, up, up, down, up. That's the first bar, right? Down, down, up, up, down, up. Again, it's to do with this continuous motion here. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Down, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 up. It's quite tricky, but it's really important that you get that because that's your hand should be kind of having that feeling like it's moving all the time. It might not actually be making every stroke like really big like that because it's going to be better this song just playing nice and little movements so you can really dig in and get a nice poppy sound on the strings. You don't want to be doing this big motion like that. I'm just trying to demonstrate the, the way that the hand keeps moving all the time. So it's doing that riff twice and then we've got this little cool chord bit. Now there's lots of different ways of playing that. I've gone for using my first and second finger. It's the third fret on the fifth string and the fourth string. Now using those two fingers kind of gives me a good mute on those thinner strings. That's why I've kind of chosen those two fingers. Just the natural lay of the fingers tends to mute up all of those other strings. So we've got those first, those two notes together, and then we've got these two notes on the fourth string. Now I suppose you could use all different fingers if you want. One, two, three, and four. But I find it easier to use my little finger in a bar there the thinnest two strings on the fourth fret. So. And then it's the same shape, it just moves up. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then we that last little note there, little fingers just moving up, and that's played on beat one. Now that complicates things in a second, but I'll explain why. So one, two, three, four, one. So when we're going back to that riff now, the f beat one is this. Beat one used to be of that riff. It was that note there. That was the note on beat one. Now we've got this. And you have to be able to jump back from that straight back into the riff. So from the riff. Etc. Now, uh, at the end of that, after it's done that a few times, we get to this little B flat seven chord. Now, from what I've seen in videos, John is playing it like this. 
So, which is first fret of the fifth string, open fourth string, first fret of the third string. But you've got to be real careful not to get, particularly the B string and the E string sound a bit gnarly on this chord. So you've got to be pretty careful just to get that. I personally find it easier to get those notes here. Here, sixth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret. Because I tend to not hit as many of those other strings if I play it that way. And I can get a bit of vibrato on it, which I think sounds kind of cool. It's the same notes. If you want it more correct, it's probably this one. One, zero, one. Right? So that, that's the end of riff two, really, is that bit. That's the part going into the chorus. So now we're at the chorus, and we're starting off with an E chord, two down strums. Now we go to this other very unusual chord. Uh, it's open D string, then first finger in the second fret of the third string, second finger in the third fret of the second string, third finger, third fret of the thinner string, and little finger is going to reach over and play the note, the fourth fret of the third string, and go on, off, on, off, and then just all of the fingers off. So E. Now, this chord, I'm putting in a little disclaimer here. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. From my ears tell me that's the se that sounds right. I thought originally it was this, with a G bass. It just seemed to make more musical sense doing it that way to me. But I can definitely hear that high G in there. And that seems to be the one that kind of sounds closest to me. But I'll put a little disclaimer, that may not be exactly the right way, but I, I, you know, if I'm jamming it with the CD, I can't hear any difference, so you'll be fine if you want to do it this way as well. A. Right, now there's a little stop. The first time, he says, suck my kiss. Second time. Now this is the third fret of the second string, and then the fourth fret of the third string. Uh, second and third fingers. And it's kind of like, it's not even a proper amount of bend, like a semitone, almost a bend. And then back, and then those two strings open. Okay, then the last time we've got these little stops. So it's E. In this gap, each time there are some stabs. Now what I mean by a stab is a really short, really short little note that just kind of stabs in. It's mostly the bass on the original recording, but definitely John's playing it along uh, live every time. So I thought I'd make sure I explained this as part of the uh, little riff here. Now, it's an E chord, is what the little riff is. And to get a nice stab sound, you play the chord, and then these three fingers are going to fall down loosely on the strings to kind of mute it, and as well, the palm of my picking hand is also going to be touching at the same time as those fingers coming down to make sure that the note that is nice and short. Now, the easiest thing to do to pick up on where those stabs are is to listen to it. Now, the first time that you hear those stabs, it's happening on the E and the R after three, and four E. So, one two, three, E, and a four, E, and. Three, E, and a four, E, and. I'm actually using up picks with this hand as well, because they're E's and R's. I would tend to play them with an up pick. Now, in the second chorus, there are only two stabs, and they're the E after three, and the E after four. So you have one, two, three, E, and four, E, and. And then back into the riff again. And the last time, there's only one stab, and it is the E after four. So one, two, three, four. And so that was the three stops with the stabs in it each time, just showing you where it is the first time, the second time, and the third time. Of course, it doesn't happen like that on the recording, but you need to listen. 
Well, I'm sure you're going to enjoy playing this tune. I had a great time learning it. I must say, it's probably one of my most favourite lessons to have uh, transcribed and then been practising along with the original recording and trying to get it in the pocket myself. You know, it's just such a such a groovy tune. It's the, the funk is strong in it, you know, and it's, it's just awesome fun to play. So I'm sure you're going to dig it as well. Great one for playing in a band as well. Your drummer and bass player will love you for suggesting this song. Um, hope you have a lot of fun playing it, and I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.